Hi, welcome to Programming with Mesh. In this session, we will get acquainted with async storage and we learn how to use it to store data locally on the device. In a previous session, we learned how to define a styles globally and we used it to define fonts globally in the app. Async storage is an unencrypted, asynchronous, persistent, key-value storage system that is global to the app. It should be used instead of local storage. Because async storage is unencrypted, don't use it to store secret items such as passwords and tokens. One of the advantages of using async storage is that you can use it as an offline storage on the user's device. And when the user closes or restarts the app, this storage will not be erased and you can still use its values. To learn more about how to store data, we do this in the form of an offline login sample. I will create a new screen called Login. And I create a simple page layout in it. In the app.js file, I change the way of navigation from drawer to a stack. I will remove screen B because we don't need it and rename screen A to home. After renaming, it asks us to apply this renaming to imports as well. I also change the function name to home. Now instead of screen B, I import the new screen we created. I change the navigation to a stack and delete any part that was not needed. Consider the login screen as the initial route. I don't want the header to be displayed for the login page, so I use this option. I also define the home screen in the stack. Well, the stack was created. Now by running the app, we will first see the login page. I create the components of the login page. First, I put an image at the top of the page, which is usually a welcome image or logo for the app. I use an image related to the async storage logo. And below the image, I put a text called async storage. Now I create a text input to get the input value from the user.
Below text input, I create a button using the custom button we created earlier. We need to import this component from the path we created. Well, the login button was created. We also put a placeholder for text input so that the user knows what to enter. Here we ask the user to enter his name. I create a state to save the name. In text input, we specify that we did change the value entered in the state we created will be saved. And we define a function for the button so that by pressing it, the user will be directed to the home screen. Inside the function, we check that the user must have entered a value. Otherwise, we show him a warning message. Now we go to this site to install the async storage module. Copy the command according to the desired package. This module was previously in the React Native library, but is now deprecated. Install the module using the copied command. And run the app. This may happen while running, and the app will not run. If you run the app on Android, first go to the Android folder in the project, and then sync the Gradle with this command. Now go back to the previous folder and run the app again. First we import async storage. Now inside the function where we wanted to save the name value, we create a try catch block and inside we use async storage. We use the set item method to store a value in it. In the first parameter we give it a string as a key. And in the second parameter we save the desired value on that key. Because we used async storage here with await, the function must run async to wait for it to run. In the catch section, if an error occurs, we display it in the console. Now we want to redirect the user to the home screen after saving the name. So we use navigation for this. With a blank value, the user receives a warning. And after entering the name, it will be redirected to the home screen. Now we prepare the home screen for the save data. I hold this state to save the name on this screen. And I change this text to show the saved name. Well, I will log in to enter the home page. The username should be displayed here. So we create a function that reads the name stored in async storage. This time we use the getItem method to read from async storage. We use the key we used to save the name as the parameter of this method. We used async await while saving. Because async storage returns a promise, we can use it this way as well. Check that if the stored value is not null, we store it as a name in the state. 
and if there is an error, we will display it in the console. Make sure async storage is imported. To use this function when the home page opens, we use use effect. If the second parameter is an empty array, the function is executed only once when the page is opened. Now if we log in, the name is first saved in async storage and then read on the home page using the same key. If we do the same on the login page, we can find out whether the user has already logged in or not when the user re-enters the app. If something was stored in the username key, we send the user to the home page without having to log in again. I import the use effect on this page to fix the error. As you can see, when the login page opens, we will be redirected to the home page because we had already entered the name. I will refresh the app once to make sure this process is correct. Now suppose we want to update the saved value anywhere in the app. I use the setData function on the home page and rename it to update data. Here if we change the name of the state, we can save it as a new value with the same key. In fact, the new value will replace the previous value. After saving, we will show a successful message to the user. Now I create a text input similar to the login page on the home page to get the new value from the user. We set its value equal to the name of the state. And with each change, we save it in the same state. We create a button like the login button using custom button to perform the update. And we put the function we created for the update as the onPress function. Now if I change the name and the value is empty, I will receive a warning message. And if I change the name, it will be stored as a new value in the same key. If I refresh the app, you will see that the saved value has changed. Now suppose we want to delete this value with the defined key from async storage. I create a function called remove data. In async storage, I use the remove item method to delete the key with its value. After deleting, we will send the user back to the login page to get the name again. I create another button to delete and add the function we created to it. As you can see, deleting the value will take you to the login page. If I refresh the app, you will see that the deletion was done correctly and we will no longer be redirected to the home page. Instead of this method, you can also use the clear method, with the difference that this method doesn't need to have a key, because it removes all the keys in async storage with their values. Once we check this process with the clear method. So far we have stored the values as a string in async storage. We can also use async storage to store objects. Suppose on the login page, we want to take more than one value from the user and save them in an object. For example, I add another text input to use to get the age of the user. I will create a new state for it. 
I tidy up the page a bit to make it look better. In the set data function, we also check that the H field is not empty. Now we create an object named user and put both values in it. We can't save this object to async storage in this way. We need to convert it to a string using JSON. We also change the name of the key. We don't need to make any changes here. And if the stored value is null, it will not enter the home page. We also add a state age to the home page. In the get data function, we change the name of the key and parse the stored value using JSON to convert it to object. Now from this value as an object, we receive the values of name and age and drop them into the state of this page. We also create a text to display the age. Now log in to see the result on the home page. And if I refresh the app, you will see that the object is stored correctly. If we want to update only one of the saved object items, for example only the name, we do this. In the update data function, we put the name inside an object. And in async storage, we use the merge item method. Rename the key and save the object as a string using JSON. Now I will update the name. And as you can see in the saved values, only the name was changed. So there we go, we learned how to use async storage and store data locally on the device. So in the next video, we will talk about local databases like SQLite. Now if you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next session.